Greetings, students. It's Mr. Roderick again, here in the music bunker, high atop Mount Clemens. And today we're going to learn a wonderful old American folk song called Mary Had a Little Lamb, based evidently on a true story, a poem written by Sarah Joseph Hale. She was a uh, teacher in a one-room schoolhouse a long time ago in uh, Sterling, Massachusetts, and she had a student by the name of Mary Sawyer who lived on a farm and one day Mary's little lamb, who Mary loved dearly, followed her all the way to school and didn't want to leave. They, they turned the lamb out of the schoolhouse and at the end of the day the lamb was there waiting for Mary to pick her up and comfort her. And it was a good moral story about being kind to animals and so Sarah Joseph Hale wrote this poem and it's a major hit. So this one's called Mary Had a Little Lamb. It uses three notes that we already know. B. A. And that ubiquitous G. Ubiquitous means it's all over the place. We use it a lot. We use G a lot, of course, because G for these songs on recorder is Do, and most songs end with Do. And so you see a lot of Gs at the end of recorder songs. Now our new note today is high D. There it is right there. If you look at the fingering, there's only one finger used, correct? And that finger is your little finger of your left hand, left hand on top of the instrument, as we remember. And we never use the pinky, so our basic position is these three fingers and the thumb, but for D, we lift these fingers away, and it's only our middle finger on that second hole down. No thumb or anything. It's, it's a high pitch note. Don't blow too hard. Remember, bend over the candle flame. And here's what D sounds like. If you have your recorder with you right now, get your recorder out and try this, okay? N middle finger on the second hole down, that's all. That's why you have to hold and brace the recorder at the bottom and put it here and play it with me. Did you get it? That'll make your dog's ears perk up. So don't play it too much. All right, let's review the other notes we know. B is just a pinch with our pointer finger and our thumb. And play it with me, please. Let's see if we can make the same tone. Now we're going to play A, where you add a finger, and it's like this. Play it with me, see if we make the same pitch. Here's G, adding one more finger, and here's the note. Play it with me, make sure we're playing the same pitch. So, the sheet music for Mary Head a Little Lamb is right here. Look at that, you can't beat it, awesome. Awesome. There are some notes rather that are not named, right? So let's see, there's B, A, G, A, B, 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 rest, A, A, what is that note? Well, it's a second space from the bottom. The spaces in the treble clef staff are F, A, C, E, so that is an, you're correct, it's an A. And of course you can tell it's exactly the same as the previous two notes, so you can just compare, and that's 
makes it easy. The next line is B, uh-oh, what's that one? Well, it's the fourth line from the bottom, and the lines in the treble clef staff are every good boy does fine, or empty be garbage before dad flips, or elephants got big dirty feet, or Elvis goes bopping down the freeway, or, well, you make up your own sentence. So that is a D. D and another D. B, A, G, uh-oh, what's this puppy? I mean, this note. That's not a puppy, it's a note. And it's the second space, A again. Hey, we can almost read this, no problem. And then the last line is B, B, uh-oh, what are these two notes? Well, of course, all these three are not labeled, but they're all Bs because they're the third line up. And then you can barely see this, but it's an A. What is this note? Yes, that's right, it's an A. What is this note? Third space, third line, B, correct. What is this note? Second space, A. And we end with, guess what? Our ubiquitous, ever-present, finishing note, Do, that goes by the letter name of... That's right, it's a G. All right, so I think I'll be a good student again. And these letters in. There's an A. There's a B. There's an A. This is a B on the sixth measure. There's an A and another A. B, A. And are ubiquitous. Everyone say ubiquitous. That's a good word our ubiquitous G. And there are our letter names all named for us. So we can sing along. Let's do that. There's a B, and here we go. B, A, G, A, B, 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 rest. A, 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 B, D, D, rest. B, A, G, A, B, 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 A, A, B, A, G, ubiquitous G. Mr. Roderick starts saying ubiquitous all the time. It's annoying. There it is. So let's learn to play it. Let's try it first without a steady beat. I'm going to finger along. And you can finger along with me or play. I'll say the letter names of the notes as they go by. Here we go. B, E, A, G, lift for A, lift for B, 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 add a finger. A, 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 lift and pinch. B, here's our new note. D, D, B, A. G, A, B, 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 one more B, B, A, A, B, A, G. Now if we break that song down, we, we play a B, add a finger A, add a finger G, then we lift only one finger, don't back, go back to B, lift one finger for A, and then play three Bs in a row. B, 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 then play three A's in a row. A, 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 and here's the hardest part of the song. You go from B to D, right? When we do this in class, we go back and forth from B to high D, from B to high D, so our fingers get used to playing it. And it's kind of fun because it sounds like an English police car. Stop your scoundrel. So anyway, let's go back to the song. It's B, then D, and another D. The second half of the song is just like the first half of the song, except for the very end. So here we go. B, add a finger, A, add a finger, G, lift, A, lift, B, 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 then there's one more B. B, two A's, A, A, then pinch a B, B, a, G, that's it. So now let's play it very slowly. Once without 
a metronome, then with the metronome, then you get to play it on your own, and then you get to play it looking at the sheet music. It's a process. Here we go. No steady beat, play with me, barely blow, control your breath. Ready, begin. Pit. Had a finger. Here's the big move. Second half. Lift. One more B. A G, it's ubiquitous. Oh, I'm supposed to stop saying that. All right, we're going to play it with a kind of a slow, steady beat. There's our metronome. Let's take it even slower. Beethoven would be proud. Here we go. Tap your foot to the steady beat. And one, two, together let's play. How did you do? If you want to play that part of the video again until you get it down, that would be awesome. But right now, let's move on and you're going to play by yourself. You've gotten the song down now and you're gonna play with me while I accompany you on the piano. Are you tapping steady beat? Tap, 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 tap. One, two, ready, begin. That was kind of fun. Now you're going to do it again, and the music will appear. Let your eye track along on every note. If you make your eye look at the notes as they go by, you will turn into a music reader, which is what Mr. Roderick wants ubiquitously. Okay, here we go. I'm playing an introduction, and then you are reading and playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. Good luck to you. Here is my introduction. You are a musical genius. I'll see you on the next lesson. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb, Mary had a little lamb, her fleece was white as snow. It followed her to school one day, school one day, school one day, followed her to school one day, that was against the rules. It made the children laugh and play, laugh and play, laugh and play, it made the children laugh and play, to see a lamb at school.